Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and meteorologist, DT, from weatherwisk.com, the colonel of confusion, the captain of catastrophe, the commander of chaos. It's time to talk about weather. Well, we have a lot to talk about in this particular edition for January 16th, 2016. We'll talk about, of course, the uh, Arctic blasts coming up here for the eastern U.S. for January 17th and 20th. And then the increasing threat of a significant mid-Atlantic snowstorm, maybe even a major one, coming up for this weekend. We'll start out first by taking a look at the short term. And this area of low pressure, which is developing here on the uh, Florida, Georgia coast during the next uh, 12 to 24 hours. Now, this system, at one point last week, the GFS model went crazy with it, brought up a significant snowstorm for the entire East Coast. But that's the GFS for you, and as it consistently mishandles even basic forecasting problems on the East Coast beyond uh, 72 hours. Um, that being said, uh, this system is going to parallel the southeastern U.S. coast over the next 24 hours. And as the cold air comes southward here tonight into uh, Sunday morning, there will be some significant overrunning precipitation here across the portions of the Carolinas into much of Virginia and the lower Maryland eastern shore. Now, this image is valid as of Sunday morning, 9 a.m. And this is a radar image from the... Uh, at latest 18Z Saturday afternoon run of the NAM, the four kilometer run. And we can see the 32 degree line here on the model is uh, fairly far to the back as you can see it back in through here. But uh, the temperatures at this point are all around 34 degrees in Richmond, about 37 in Norfolk. And as the precipitation comes up, we may see some cooling temperatures uh, coming down the pike here. Um, and uh, as, as, as the precipitation gets a little heavier, in fact, by uh, noon on Sunday, we can see pretty heavy precipitation across Richmond and down towards Norfolk, the northern neck, uh, northeast of North Carolina. And in this area, there may be some periods of wet snow. And um, of course, the ground temperatures are going to still kind of warm. This is not going to stick on the roads, but there might be some small accumulations on your lawns, your car tops, your grassy surfaces, your bushes, what have you, the back decks. So we have, you should be aware of that this is going to be a problem for some areas. I've been talking about this since Thursday. A lot of the TV folks were said that this was not going to be a big deal. In fact, even one of them said just ignore the social media conversation going on about snow Sunday morning in central Virginia. Now suddenly they all have snow in the forecast for central Virginia on Sunday morning and midday. And one of the issues here is the dew point. Now, even though the temperatures are going to be a little above 32 degrees in central Virginia and not into the Piedmont and northern neck, if you look at the dew point, it's actually temperatures here on the dew point over Richmond by Sunday morning at, let's say, 10 a.m., 26 degrees here 29 in Norfolk and uh, you know 27 in Danville up towards uh, northern Virginia 27 so that means that temperatures might be cold enough when the precipitation comes down to force a temperature to 32 degrees in which case you could get snow so if the precipitation come down heavy enough we got snow if not it'll be a mixed precipitation and down towards Hampton Roads and Norfolk and in northeast of North Carolina this looks to be mostly a rain snow mix event ending as snow as the cold air finally comes in all right, so much for that uh, event. And then, of course, these are temperatures here, 35 degrees again, Sunday afternoon in Richmond, 35 in Norfolk. So, again, if the precipitation comes down hard enough, it could be snow. And now, the cold air that comes in behind it, look at these temperatures Monday morning, folks. 19 degrees in Richmond, in the single digits in the Shenandoah Valley. This is some cold, cold Arctic air coming in here. This is Tuesday morning. You know, if you're getting 16 degrees in Richmond in January with no snow on the ground, that's cold. Shenandoah Valley, single digits, no snow on the ground. That's cold. D.C., 15. Uh, D Greensboro, North Carolina, 17 degrees. That's impressive cold with no snow on the ground. And then Wednesday morning, even more. Wow, wow. That's, I mean, it's it's going to be cold, folks. What can I tell you? All right, now that sets up the situation for January 22nd, 23rd. This is going to be a Gulf of Mexico system, I believe. Um, some of the models are trying to show a secondary redevelopment of the Ohio Valley. I think that's BS, and I'll tell you, tell, tell you about that why in a second. The timing is going to be an issue as the cold air is not going to last beyond January 24th. So if this system gets delayed at all 24 hours, it's going to be a totally different setup. And again, the other issue, I think, is going to be the northern extent of the snow shield. Does it get into New York City? Does it get into Philly? That sort of thing. 
let's take a look at it. this is the European model from early Saturday morning and we can see the main trough is here and what's important to notice here is that the two jet streams are not phasing we have the southern jet stream going this and here's the northern jet stream which dips down but it's not a full phase so the main area of low pressure is here and unless these two systems phase the low ends up going out like this the other issue is this next piece of energy coming in here which is pushing the ridge eastward so everything's being shoved east so that's why this is a mostly mid-atlantic situation and we're not looking at a full phase from what i can see at this time now maybe that'll change but that's what it looks like to me this is the european model the surface map from early saturday morning you can see the low moving off the coast we have snow over north far northern north carolina central and eastern virginia into lower maryland eastern shore rain along the coast and then we can see a bigger map here again this is from uh you can see friday morning the uh, situation here is beginning to develop here and then we can see moving off the coast a little bit more now now there is an analog storm which i think matches this very nicely this is the february 11th to 12th 1983 mid-atlantic snowstorm which was a doozy it also was in a strong el nino year and i think that's significant in fact if you go back to february 7th notice this system here a couple of days before also had a primary low that was very strong and a cold low here off the mid-atlantic coast as you can see I'm these two features this one right here and this one right here and of course this is all rain for New England very similar to what we had last night into early this morning so again I think there is some similarities and if we look at the actual upper air pattern look at the high over northeast North Carolina coming down there's our low right here you can see it there's the high and then look at the jet stream patterns here see how the southern system dips down like this but the northern jet and the Arctic jet does not phase so the system flies off the coast it was a major snowstorm and the heavy snow got into New York City even though it was not supposed to the original forecast I remember for New York City was only four to eight inches they ended up getting over uh, 15 to 20 inches of snow so there may be some of that you know figuring out where the northern extent of the system is going to be if this analog is correct I may be wrong about this but that's how I see it right now now this is the uh, regular midday uh, European that came out Saturday afternoon and again notice the similarity the low is off the Wilmington coast the enormous Arctic high well it's not enormous but it's strong over Messina northern New York and notice here that the only cold air in the U.S. at this point is over New England that's this is the only cold air everybody else is just uh, was warm once you cross the Mississippi River it's way warm out in here so and the white line here represents the rain snow line right along the North Carolina Virginia border and there could be some ice in northern North Carolina and Hampton Roads as well so that's what the operational if we, if we zoom in in here this is coming in Friday morning uh, on January 22nd here this is again the Saturday European run but this is valid for the morning of the 22nd and the rain snow line is, is actually as far south as Greensboro almost in Raleigh and a lot of the ice line is even further south than that so when the precipitation comes in Friday afternoon most of Virginia should be cold enough for snow and even the northern North Carolina and then if we look at it enlarged again this is Saturday morning the 23rd and you can see this rain snow line uh, between Richmond and Norfolk and the large the atmosphere is cold enough to support snow across all of Virginia except for the southeast and all of Maryland and Delaware the Delmarva and so on and so forth and again there could be some ice uh, in northern North Carolina into Hampton Roads now what's going on here why is the model doing this well the afternoon European model here's a jet stream map and what's important here is we have two pieces of energy a system A and system B and the northern jet system A and the piece of energy in the southern jet system B these two features do not phase because of energy coming in from the west coast now if they phase this system will roll up the coast and go up towards Boston but right now the data doesn't show that happening and that's why and we can see the European ensemble look at this significant storm uh, on the uh, southeast North Carolina coast this is a classic central Virginia Maryland western Virginia big snowstorm track even western North Carolina up into southern New Jersey and then it slides off the coast off of Hatteras and the we, again we end up having northern snow extent issues we don't know how far north the heavy snow goes but that's this is a classic track if, I mean you couldn't ask for a better snowstorm track for central Virginia assuming of course the temperatures stay cold enough and then if we look at the upper air map what happens again remember those two features A and B the European model says A does not phase and the B system slides off the Carolina coast and goes out to sea now we can see this in more detail this is the European ensemble for Saturday afternoon and we can see it I have one o'clock Friday 1 a.m. Saturday 1 p.m. Sunday boom 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 and notice with again we don't know how far north the heavy snow moves according to the European ensemble something like this 
something like this just south of New York City, but it might be New York City, and it is a long way to go to watch this, but this is a fairly cold set setup. And again, the purple line here represents the rain snow line. Okay, the GFS ensembles, let's take a look at the GFS. As usual, the GFS screws it up because it's the GFS. It's not going to get it right. It's a piece of crap. And uh, you can see it here, again, what, the, what GFS is doing, which is wrong. The GFS does, in fact, phase the two systems. It absolutely phases it. You have a big closed low over Missouri, and the system does like that. And as a result, the surface low comes off the coast. Now, is that correct? Is that possible? Uh, no, I don't think it is. Now, this is the operational GFS. And again, if you're in central North Carolina, northwest Virginia, Pennsylvania, this looks like a good snowstorm. But traditionally, synoptically, when you have a low over Salisbury, Maryland, you have rain to New York City and Jersey and Philly and D.C. and Richmond. You, having a big low like that over Salisbury, Maryland is not good. Look at the winds even in Connecticut. You're getting southeast winds here. So the model may show snow in Connecticut, but if you have a low over uh, Salisbury, Maryland, no, uh, ain't happening. Not based upon experience and, and the synoptic setup. The problem is that GFS ensembles do not support the operational. They support the European. Notice it has no closed 500 low here over, over, over uh, Missouri, like the operational did. And the system is way down in here. And this system does not phase. The northern branch does, does this. This is the European solution. So the GFS ensemble supports the European solution. Here's the surface map. And again, where is all the lows? Let's take a look. See, all the lows are over here. Okay, as valid Friday morning. And if we go to the next slide, all the lows moving off the North Carolina coast. There's the big high over here. I've got my marker. There's the big high like this. There's the lower like this. That's not the operational GFS. That's the GFS. And so that's the that's the European solution, folks. That's what that is. So that's why I'm favoring the European solution. All the data is going that way. So here's the GFS ensembles moving the system off the coast. We can see that again. Let's look at the Canadian. Well, the Canadian, uh, th this is the GFS ensemble. We can see in more detail. Notice the rain snow line here before we get to the, to the Canadian. Uh, we can see that the rain snow line, that's the blue line right here, going right through Norfolk, as you can see. The low is off the coast. This is all snow. The high is here. This is not, remember, the GFS had the actual low over Salisbury, Maryland. Here it's over Hatteras. Again, vastly different, a big step towards the European solution. And the Canadian, well, the Canadian's useless as usual. It has a big close 500 low over Indiana and Ohio. And again, maybe that solution is correct. I don't think it is. And we can see where's the low over Salisbury, Maryland. There's your southeast wind. Everybody, D.C.'s raining, Philly's raining, Richmond's raining. Rain is moving into New York City at that point. But if we look at the GFS ensemble, I mean, excuse me, the Canadian ensemble, where does it have the low? Yes, folks, it's got the low, like the European, on the North Carolina coast going out to sea. And this is the rain snow line is much further south. It's a much bigger system. It's more snow for everybody. So it's a totally different setup. So again, the European ensemble for me is the way to go here. And sure enough, there's the Canadian model taking the low off the coast. So in summary, the European ensemble solution is most consistent. It makes the most sense with the pattern. You should ignore the operational or regular GFS and Canadian models until we get within about three or four days. And you should only use the GFS and Canadian ensembles until we get within three days. This is meteorologist DT from weatherrisk.com. I'll talk to you soon.